Hello, this is Cooking with Fatty, episode four. Well, today we're going to make a good old southern recipe, and uh, it's going to be beans, ham and bean soup with cornbread. So, uh, first of all, we're starting with the beans here, and we're going to use. Uh, all right, now, as you can see here, I have got the beans in there. Now, what I've already done here is it's a little bit of a quicker method um, than what most people might use. Some people, you know, soak them for a while and boil them for like three hours. Now, I do a little bit of a quicker mode so that, you know, it doesn't take forever. Basically, what I do is... Uh, I, I wash the beans off and I've already done this. I take the beans out of the bag. I wash them real good to make sure the de you know, there's no debris or dirt or any kind of bad beans in there. I want to make sure it's nothing but good choice quality beans. Wash them all real good. I stick them in there and I put about three inches of warm water on there. And... Uh, then... Um, I put them on here and put them on a like a medium simmer and um, I, I until they get it to about a rolling boil you know a little bit of a boil uh, and, and then I let them boil for 15 minutes okay then once they're boiled for 15 minutes I shut the uh, temperature off or the the burner off and then I let them sit and that's where that's the point we're at right now we're gonna we're gonna stir these just a little bit all right okay and we're gonna put just a little bit more of, of warm water just to where it's uh, covered over about two inches from the beans okay and then that way as they as they stand and swell a little bit then you know stage and um, now there's a couple things that we're going to talk to you about that are uh, in addition. I always like to put some black pepper in it and some paprika, uh, a dash of paprika. You know, I use that on a lot of stuff just for a little bit of an extra zing, I guess. And, and when they're done, you can even use a little bit of this Louisiana sauce if you want, if you're, if you're brave enough. But uh, hey, fish, don't be eyeballing that sauce. That's not good for you. But uh, anyhow... And of course, we've already put some salt in there too. I put about a half a table, about a half a tablespoon of salt in there. And I didn't want to put too much in because, of course, the ham itself has salt in it. And you know, I, before at times I put a little bit too much salt in, and then from the saltiness of the ham, it was just a little too salty, and I don't want that. You know, of course, some people are on low sodium diets, and we want to make sure that you know we don't affect them adversely. And of course, you know. Uh, it just doesn't taste like it should if it's too salty, obviously. Okay, and it's not good for you. Okay, now we come over here. Um, I've already chopped up the onions for later. And of course, I've got my ham here, and I'm basically just using some bulk ham. Uh, you know, and about that a little later. It's real good ham. You can use bacon. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, if you don't have onion, fresh onion which I prefer to use but if you don't have that you can use some picola cabala or whatever it's called in Mexican I guess that's like a chopped up onion dehydrated you can use that and rehydrate it that helps along with a little bit of onion powder and that usually will come out okay if you put enough in there but I prefer to use whole onion because it just makes it so much better okay we're going to get a little bit of a spoon here and uh, and I've, I've got this jiffy mix which is what I prefer to use I put one egg in there. This is for the cornbread. So I've got one egg in there, right? I got three quarters of a cup of milk in there. Now, if you're going to use this uh, for a muffin, like a muffin pan, and make individual muffins, then of course you're going to want to try and, uh, you know, do this a little bit different because uh, see how runny that gets. But for the cake, the cake part, it's not bad, okay? That you use about one third of a, a, a cup. Uh, you know for the muffins the individual muffins and about three quarters of a cup if you're gonna make the cake out of it uh, don't ask me why apparently you know and this could vary a little bit from climate to climate whether you're at a higher elevation you just have to check the box but uh, it looks a little runny but uh, actually for the cake method that's what it's supposed to be uh, and you know of course you got to get it all mixed up in there too real good too and that helps 
with the runniness, of course. Scoop that off of there a little bit. And, uh, and now another thing you're going to need is a tablespoon of margarine, okay? Now basically, this is to, to, to kind of oil the pan, okay? Now, uh, you don't always have to do that. Sometimes they say you don't have to oil the pan at all. See, I still got egg up in there and stuff. It needs to be mixed up a little bit. But just stirring it real good at a nice even beat there and chopping it just a little. It's going to be just a hair lumpy, but, you know, don't want it too lumpy, of course. Okay. Chop them chunks up there a little bit. Stir it around. And around we go. Where she stops, so nobody knows. Okay, that's looking like it's thickening. Let that stand just for a minute. Soak up that powder. Okay, and then we'll kind of spread this around a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And, and it will bake. You don't want to get your hands real messy. I use the margarine. And you know, butter's obviously a little better flavored, but but the margarine's a lot less calories and of course cholesterol. Some of us have to worry about cholesterol because we're getting older and everything, you know, but others of us don't have to. All of us should really be concerned about it a little. No matter whether you're fat or skinny, you know, cholesterol can be a problem. But so we're gonna try to do that. And then that should just bake right into that. You know, if you got a little too much excess, you can kind of take it off there so you don't have big clumps of oil in there or any excess fat but uh, that's not a bad idea so. okay now we're gonna go ahead and pour that in there real nice now you know this is all on the box I just thought I'd throw this in to help aid in the uh, process a little bit and let you know what we're doing it's not that hard and most of you've made cakes or whatnot not too hard to deal with. Okay. I think we got it. All right. Now we'll level that just a hair. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to hold off on that a, just a little bit until we get ready to uh, process uh, the rest of our bean mixture that's going to be cooked up real nice and fancy. And that will be on segment two. So that'll be coming right up. Well, we've waited our hour while the beans, you know, stood or let stand or whatever you want to call it. And now it looks like they've kind of uh, rehydrated a lot, but they're still kind of hard and they need to be cooked quite a bit. So I'm going to stir those just a little bit right here. And I want to put just a little more water in them again. Because when they cook, it's going to be cooking off quite a bit over top of the beans, like I said before. We don't want too much in there, a little bit more fine. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and cook that up on about a four on the electric. If you have a gas range, it might be a little bit less. You have to experiment. I recommend quite a bit of it. It really gives it a good flavor once it boils. Now, I'm not going to put the ham in right now because I want to wait till that uh, until this boils. Probably about, I'm going to let this boil about an hour and a half. Uh, before I put the ham in because the ham doesn't it's already basically cooked it doesn't take a whole lot but I do want it to cook in there a little bit to add the flavor it's got some smokiness in it that adds to the flavor some people put liquid smoke in this maybe a dash or a teaspoon of liquid smoke uh, and some people uh, when you buy certain kinds of like those ham bean brand beans they have a little packet in them that's just like a smoke flavor and that adds to it too now if you're putting bacon in you know, you probably won't need to put any smoke flavor in, but with ham, it just depends on how much ham, the, you know, smoky flavor the ham has. But a little bit of that smoky flavor does add to the flavor of the beans, I think. Um, so, basically, there's that. Um, and um, we'll hurry up and get this done so we don't waste too much on one item. 
Now, um, I'm like I said before, I put just a dash of paprika in there. I won't put any Louisiana hot sauce in there. I put that on it when it's in my bowl. So I'm going to say, I use the ball of my hand. And, and if you go about, about right there is about, uh, oh, about a half a teaspoon, maybe just a little bit more. You know, but if now, we're going to go ahead and stir that one more time just to kind of combine that so the beans don't burn on the bottom. Every now and then, as this cooking, it's probably going to take about two to three hours for this to cook up all the way, depending on, you know, but this is definitely a quicker way than, you know, what it would be if you didn't, you know, cook them 15 minutes boiling and then let them stand an hour. It would take a lot longer. It may take five hours and simmering you know, in, in a crock pot or whatever. This is going to reduce our time to about two hours maybe to three at the max depending. And I, I want to stir these about every 15-20 minutes and be careful that it don't uh, boil over and that you don't burn anything on the bottom. Absolutely be very careful not to burn anything because burnt flavor is obviously not going to do any good for the dish. And uh, and so we're going to go ahead and put this in. Uh, we have been allowing these beans to simmer, as you can see, for about an hour. Okay. Now they're probably about halfway cooked at this point. Uh, you may have to have two hours. It just depends. Don't get in a big hurry. And make sure you stir them, like I said before, about every 15 to 20 minutes, just so they don't get all collected on the bottom and, and burn. Uh, you may want to reduce it just a hair maybe um, and, and that way that will also guard against that. I'm going to put the ham in now. It's been going about an hour. I'm going to go ahead and put all the ham in there now. And um, so um, we'll stir that in and uh, while you were uh, back on that and continue to simmer that for about one to two more hours. All right, while we were on break, uh, I went ahead and put the cornbread in and it was set at 375 for 20 minutes. I think I run it about 25. You can run it 400 at about 15 to 20 or 375 if you like a little bit of a lower setting just to be on the safe side at about 20 to 25. But just be time it with your uh, hold timer and uh, make sure you don't go overdo it. Uh, and um, we'll take that out now. This is a nice little uh, oven mitt. Actually, I think this is a welding glove, but hey, for all you guys out there that think it's sissified to be in the kitchen, use a welding glove, man. Hey, that makes it more like a manly thing. You know what I mean? Ugh. Okay, now we're gonna take a fork and check that right in the middle. Uh, and if we don't see anything sticking on that fork in the middle, hey, we're good, man. Hook a few holes in there just to kind of vent it a little bit so it'll cool a little quicker. And there it is. I'm going to take out the, the, the cake done, and it turned out great. So um, a little bit of iced tea with that. Boy, you can't get no more southern than that. And uh, the beans are still going to continue to cook for uh, probably about another hour. And uh, as you can see, uh, see if you can get a shot down in there. As you can see, boy, there's a lot of ham and onion seasonings, and they really look great. Now, one thing you can do to kind of test these is take a little on the left. See, as you can see, that's still a little bit crunchy yet. But when they get real soft and just, you know, split right down the middle real easy. See, that's still a little hard yet then you know they're done. And you can sample taste them too. Put a little in a spoon. When it's real nice and soft and the texture's just right, you know they're ready to go. But just remember to keep stirring them and don't burn them and, or else that will severely affect your flavor, obviously. And that's about it. And boy, isn't that going to be great. Well, we thank you for joining us with this, the fourth edition of Cooking with Fatty. We hope you have a great week and enjoy your dinner. So, peace, fish says howdy, and we're out.